you know, black folks and hammering out a bunch of videos real fast and, you know, they're sloppy, but I don't really care about that. It's just getting the facts out. So basically we have known when we are basically at the end of, and this is the freshest that I've got from uh, our friends from the French and the Canadian telescope over in Hawaii here. Now I'm going to try to freeze it there before the sun is coming up. Okay, I'm not really paying attention about the sun and the supergiants right now, but we do know that we end up seeing these shadows. And what I've been wondering if this is this thing that we've always seen on a lot of YouTube videos a long time ago within the last two years, and they might still be up on the tube, they should be, that uh, NASA or some organization from the Space Alliances and stuff like that from all the countries and stuff have put some kind of a sheet. And I remember seeing some videos on it and stuff like that, and I just didn't really get too concerned because I kind of knew what they were up to. And I think it's still kind of highly classified about the things that I think they're because they were doing some science studies also with a portion of it. They do a lot more than one thing. And I got to bite my tongue on that a little bit. When they send something up, there's a lot more than one thing that's going up there. They don't waste the fuel too much. There's usually some, a lot of times there'll be one other project or something that will fly up, take off with the satellite or something. You see, they actually, when they get up where you can't see it in space, sometimes there'll be a little bit of something else that goes out somewhere else. And sometimes there could be more than one satellite on something that's going into space folks cargo costs a lot of money to get up there those rockets ain't cheap so now uh and that's going to be when private too they're going to end up catching on to that too but nasa does it real good so we've always had this here whether this is an object that's up by the sun and the super giants but it's always stationary on the shot now this is not a dirty lens okay because this stuff appears and disappears and we know that they're basically some kind of planetarial or whatever you want to call it an object and basically they must be pretty darn good sizes now we do know that we have remnants and I have showed you actual scientific data that's in databases on it before that follow the earth and also there's remnants of actually the moon also in its orbit okay and they're small objects but it's It'd be interesting for people to do is because see these stay these are basically some remnants or something to do that's in space that's pretty much with Hawaii's directional is always there in the sky now you're going to see I believe this one here will have another one that moves or orbits around this one here and you're gonna see it in this footage here pretty quick now as you can see there are something that's in front of the Sun that orbits around the sun that ends up putting this like I say when you take a camera and you've always thought that you have had uh, lens flare okay there's always been those colors that you end up seeing in front of the sun when you shoot towards the sun on a 35 millimeter camera and you know how they've always had us go to digital yeah well in the 35 millimeter too also you would always see those signatures there's always what is in front of the sun okay because there is objects in front of the sun pretty much all this time and yes reflections bending light around something forget it light is just like a flashlight you turn it on and then you can play charades with that light or cut it down by blotching out pieces of that light i.e headlights in world war ii and certain wars where the idea they made just a little you know optical little view so the idea that it's not seen that much at nighttime if you actually had to turn your lights on and off and so forth and so on okay so getting back to the fact here that we're looking at all these dark blo dark blotches up in space that pretty much stay stagnant with earth and with the direction of Hawaii on basically a GPS of Hawaii now satellites don't sit there above now there are some that do okay there are some satellites that can be propelled that it takes a lot of fuel to keep it right over top of something okay otherwise they're orbiting and they do their orbit like I'll do give you you know everybody's seen this snake when NASA has their deal up there or if you go look at everybody knows that there's usually an orbit like this because of the oscillation of earth okay you can see my cursor as I'm going like that you see what I'm saying it's got an S going it's like a snake okay because we are always uh, oscillating like a bullet okay rotating like a bullet and we wrote the earth does rotate but when it's rotating we also get a little north south axis action okay because we are a bullet tumbling through space at more than 60,000 miles an hour and of recent way more than 66,000 miles an hour it's almost been like six sixty six thousand and something like 600 and something miles an hour that we've been going okay 
So these objects are there, and you can't miss it, especially here just before this, and you'll also see it back when I play it back. Now I'm going to hit play and pause, because what we're going to do is you're going to watch these objects that are up there, and this is the one that is. I was actually wrong when I was pointing about this one. Now watch this. Now you see how this got this darker one behind it that comes out from behind that whatever object that is? Now yes, these are... It could be shadows, like my voice been saying. But I'm starting to believe that these are actually the remnants that are around close by Earth that are always out there. Because remember that Saturn, all our known eight planets in the Earth, so basically we have real estate up there that basically no one's went to yet. So if you were to go up there and put a flag on it for your country, or hey, you want to make up your own country, you're a king and then you've got a piece of... Now, do you need oxygen up there? more than likely, but then you can't believe everything NASA says or anything a lot of scientists are paid to tell you. Now here's these blotches at the beginning. You're going to see it. It's the same stuff. So you watch this one and also this blotch over here and it's not anything dirty on the lens, okay? Because you'll see them go away at nighttime. You see that? When we get to nighttime, and I'll just back it up a little bit, you see how they go away? So we get nighttime and they don't, don't you keep, they're not a not visible. So they're dark objects in space, basically dead planets or whatever, but they stay GPS locked above this area in Hawaii. So basically over the Pacific. So those are our remnants that somehow rotate in the exact same sequence of Earth because they stay GPS locked. As you see all everything, and we already kind of know this, all this stuff in space, but we are knowing now that because no matter what, either that, or you got a lot more eyes on you over in the Pacific than what we thought for satellites, because then they're spending a lot of fuel and money keeping those if they are satellites, and I really doubt that they're satellites. I really believe that they're actually, no matter what, are. Now, I'm just going to speed forward, because here comes the sun, right? And the supergiants, as we know that, you've understood that finally, that, yeah, that's not just the sun, it's the supergiants and the sun, because here will come the sun. Okay, now you have your blotches here. Now, but watch, there's going to be one that's going to come out from behind, and it does it when it's sunrise. So it comes out from behind and it rotates around there. So either that, or we have a satellite system where the idea that when the daylight comes, we got a satellite that can see during the daytime, and it moves out from behind that blotch. Otherwise, this is all objects in space, and they stay stationary here all the time because you can constantly see it in the footage from the telescope there. So now watch this because that's the one where it's going to come out from behind. And right about, ooh, okay, right about there. Now, is it a 3D image from the sun making that happen? Now, it's that's possible. I'm not going to unargue with people on that, but if you've seen lately, they're always cutting our footage off right about there when we get that nice action from the sun, you see? And now we're not getting to see that signature because you can see what's in front of the sun, folks, these objects here. And this is more than likely our mass, uh, I believe it is like uh, one of the 50s or something from mass 40. And they usually call it M. So M41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then, or M50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see what I'm saying? These objects are actually up there. Dwarf stars died out objects because basically right here with this not losing the end of the video you can see right there that that object there is right there now is it a shadow that reflects from this actual object right there because these objects are all right there because I can back it up right to there and actually not I'm sorry but I'm just playing with the player but there you go I'll stop that you see these are all up there all this stuff is up here this 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 there's tons of it here and here and here, and we know Earth rotates, so this stuff, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, rotates and stays GPS locked on. That's actually correct, folks. And you see there is a ton of triangulation. I mean, there's always triangulation of stuff in space, you see. So astronomers over the times have always just kind of did little doodles. They had nothing better to do. They didn't have TV. They didn't have Internet. So they would draw objects when they would see these things in the sky. Okay, ladies and gentlemen? So this is either stuff in the... So basically, make a comment to all my videos, make especially to this one here, make a comment. And let's get it down to what everybody figures in that it goes to deduction. We are all intelligent. What is it? Is it actually the objects of our Milky Way galaxy? 
or what stays, because we know factual by watching this, that always stays GPS locked with the point. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line with GPS directly to the Hawaiian Island area. Okay? This here, this, 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 all of these, and this. Either that, or then recently, then we have the asteroid belt, of us, which we do know. But NASA lied to us and said there's nothing close to us and nothing for a long time, which is a bunch of BS. We all know that. Okay, there's a bunch of asteroids. You go research all that stuff, it's out there. So I just want to nail it down to what everybody believes that it is. So, because it's always right there. And then I do kind of agree by just sitting here and watching it that my, even to myself, ducking down to the idea that as soon as the sun comes up, it starts to be a 3D effect or a shadow of this object right there. But there's still this object here. This object here, and this object here, and many, many more up here. So, and we also know that basically I am pretty much correct on the idea that it's not a lens flare. All this stuff is always 3D images of dwarf stars that are directly in front of the sun. And it's the idea that we've always never really known they're there unless you get a welding goggle out or something like that and directly would look into the sun. And also lens protects your telescope to look at the stuff also. Because this is all signature of stuff that is in front of the sun. And you all you can tell by this, this is an object, that's an object, and then there's some objects that are intertwined here. And this could be the same here, but it's a 3D effect of this, 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 this. But what object is it? Is it this here that starts to be the 3D? Or is it one of the objects that's in this lens that everybody always professionally as a photographer calls it a lens flare, but it's actually objects that are in front of the sun? Okay? or suns because i.e. you can see that right there and yes there's always 3d reflections of suns whether it's any of the suns of the supergiants so there's nighttime sky as you see everything that we know of astronomy rolling by because basically earth is rotating and here comes the supergiants and as you see i'm getting a glitch here and then we get the suns at least the sun will come up that will give us light right now and then you get 3d effects so right now we're getting a lot of time from one, and then we've had all these videos I've showed you before where that it took, there was way more than one sun up there. And yes, other planets get illuminated, and they look like suns, i.e. a pilot diving because of you know seeing Jupiter after waking up from a nap. And they do officially take naps, folks. They go on cruise control. The co-pilot, co-captain is sitting in the seat. If something goes wrong, he's got enough ability to up the motors, do something, or try to get it under control before... If he's in the bathroom or taking his nap or talking to, you know, and then now they usually lock their door, and I'm all for him having a gun up there. Then, you know, you're on a safe flight. Okay? So, very interesting. Okay? So then I don't think there's anything, and I'm starting to believe that maybe some, some of the directional left rights, but we had the ones that looked before were actually, we knew that they were too fast to be airplanes, and they were actually light propagation from space down to Earth. Okay, so some of these might be planes, some of them might be satellites and stuff like that. I'll just back, back you know, that action there. Might be satellites, might it be uh, F-18s, our newest, fastest jets, or whatever. You see what I'm saying? And or commercial, because see, they speeded the tape time up like crazy. It used to be real slow where you could kind of see where the idea that I would kind of go is like, you know, that ain't a plane. Then I've even had, it could be somebody that's impersonating being somebody that's been in the military, but there has been people make comments say, hey, I used to be in the... Now listen to me, no matter what, whether it's illegal or not, there's people that are out there that are heavy, heavy military that they don't like somebody saying that they're military and not military. So the idea, most everybody's pretty damn smart about that. So if I got somebody that's saying they're military on here and says that they're this, you know, I don't believe it a thousand percent, but the idea I think is pretty factual that some of the objects that I have pointed out in my videos, they pretty much say the same damn thing, that they're not airplanes, okay? Now I do agree what we're seeing crisscross here could be satellites or something like that or F-18s, or something new that the military can tell you about a faster jet, okay? Keeping a real good eye. But then again, it still could be light triangulation that we know from we get from outer space that I've proved before because it's like whammo, it's there. Because to me, it doesn't look like this, it, this ends up coming up from underneath the clouds. It's like all of a sudden it's there, see? Kablamo, and then away, gone. See, in a very short amount of time. So a lot of stuff still to look at. It. These, uh, the French-Canadian telescope over there is very interesting. Always look at this footage over there. 
Okay, because we basically got it down and we always see these shadows. And then boom, and then I think that is a shadow that gets created by the sun that comes out from around this object here. But then again, maybe it is an orbital, but it's not kind of coinc coincidental that it looks like a shadow of this object. But you know that that 